How's everybody tonight? Well, I'm glad that you're blessed and highly favored. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know, things are happening right in front of us. Things are happening all over, right in front of us. And there's many things that our people are missing. And, and, and unless you understand the signs of the time and, and the symbols, you will miss many things. There's messages in everything. In events, you know, the world will call it coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe that God knows it all. And that every event and everything that's going on is for some sort of a reason. And there is a message or a symbol in it. And we're to interpret these things. Would you turn to Daniel chapter 5, verse 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Well, Daniel wasn't interested in gifts or rewards from the king. And give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. That he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. I still think that's a phenomenal miracle, man, I'm telling you. Can you imagine turning a man into an animal? He ate the same thing the beast ate. He was in the field for years. God did not let him come right back. He stayed there. And then he brought him back to his senses. But you, his son, Belazar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this, and you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone which do not see, nor hear, nor know, and the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him. And this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Menai, Menai, Texkel, Abshashrin. This is the interpretation of each word. Benai, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. In other words, it's it. Takal, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. wanting. Press, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Now, this is the combination of the, the kingdoms that are the BRICS nations. Then Belazar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a 
proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belazar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain, and Darius the Meda received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So we see the first thing that God did was he numbered his kingdom. He said, it's finished. I'm ending it. Now, you got to remember something about all this. Uh, there were, of course, it's the Babylonian system. And they were taking the things of the Lord's temple and worshiping gold and silver and, and stuff to that degree of and materialism. And when he said, the, you've been weighed in the balances and found wanting, that's financial. That's economic. The third thing he did was he divided, giving the Medes and the Persians, of course, those are the BRICS nations. They worshipped money. What does the Bible say? The love of money is the root of what? All evil. He said, the word says you can't serve money and God. You'll hate one and love the other. And we're seeing all of this now. In other words, the writing is on the wall. It's everywhere. Now, this is the lineage of Cain. Now, we have Cain and Abel. I'm not going to go through all the scriptures on this. Cain was of the wicked one. Amen? Seth was Adam's son. We have two lineages of Jews. One is what we call the fake, not the true Jew, not, not the true. There's the righteous and there's the wicked. And these two lineages, and when, in fact, when, when the Lord removed Cain and sent him out, Cain was freaked out. He said, man, look at everybody's going to know who I am now. They're going to try and kill me. He said, don't worry, I'll mark you. And he marked him. And so Cain went to a place called Nod. Nod, that word Nod is meaning wandering. That's where the word comes from, where people talk about wandering Jew. Jeremy, anybody ever hear that? Because it was a place of wandering. Cain was cursed where he couldn't grow nothing. So they had to get from other tribes or whatever, vegetables and things to that degree, but they could have meat. Now, isn't that kind of wild? Because he was the one that first offered all of the, he could grow things, but after he was cursed, he couldn't anymore. So we see these lineages, these two lineages that still come down all the way now. And what we're seeing all over right now, we're seeing, I don't know if you've seen Con Kanye West, who's exposing all of the corrupt, and he calls them all Jews. They're all Jews. They're corrupt Jews. But they're really not truly Jews. They're the lineage, the seed of the serpent, which call themselves Jews. And, 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 and you remember, what's his name, um, who did Braveheart? Was that it, Braveheart? What was his name? Mel Gibson. You remember when he was cursing the Jews? Because he was drunk and he was cursed. He, was, he wasn't cursing the true Jew. He was cussing out the fake Jew. And what we're seeing right now, in fact, it, it, when you go back, you'll find that these Jewish regimes run all the banking systems. We'll go a little further here in a minute. In Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, listen to the sound of the trumpets. But they said, 
we will not listen. It's almost like them saying, <laughs> listen to the sound of Trump, what's coming out of his mouth. But they would not listen. Therefore, hear you nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words. For my law, nor my law, but rejected it. For what purpose to me comes frankincense from Sheba, and what sweet came from a far country? Yet your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifice of sweet to me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people. The family, the fathers and the sons together shall fall on them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people comes from the north country. A great nation will be raised from the farthest parts of the earth. What is a north country? Russia. They will lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roars like the sea, and they ride on horses as a man of, of man of war set an array against you, O daughter of Zion. Now, O daughter of Zion here is not the lineage of Seth. It is the lineage of Cain. Is everybody okay? This is corruption that has taken hold with a great rebellion and rejection, which is against the requirement that God, that pleases God. The daughter of Zion, the false Jews, they're known as Khazar. Khazar. That's where it comes from. Khazarian. There's a Khazar, they, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Khazarian Mafia or the Moravian. They are regimes. They are associated with the Rockefellers and so forth. And they are false Jews. They are globalists. They are antichrist regimes that hold seats of position in the global central banking systems, the political systems, the pharmaceutical system, the media, the trade, the music, the movie, the military, and especially Hollywood. And this is where a lot of people are exposing and coming out right now. In other words, the writing is on the wall. It's coming out right in front of everyone. Um, man, they've had Kanye West on for the last week. He is exposing everything. Everything. And how wicked and evil and corrupt and all of their handlers and how his, his, his the, the Cardassians, how they're associated and involved in all of this. This is the lineage of Cain. Does everybody understand that? These are the fake Jews. Now, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 2, in verse 8, to the angel of the church in Samaria, right. These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are of the what? Synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested, <laughs> and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Now, talks about ten days of tribulations. I've heard the prophecy that we'll have ten days of darkness in this whole transition. It's a prophetic word that's been released. In other words, this is when they're going to begin to overtake. This will be the invasions that will be happening by uh, Christ regimes against the Antichrist regimes, taking down the media, taking down all kinds of stuff. There may be 10 days of darkness. These are false Jews. They're known as the synagogue of Satan. 
in Revelation 3 and verse 8. The Lord said, I know your work. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. I'm telling you, these things are about to happen. They're not going to come and, don't get me wrong, they're not going to come and worship you. But they're going to bow down to know that you are a Christian and Christ is with you. They are going to bow down to the name above all names, Jesus. That's what they're going to bow down to. This is all coming. This is not something that's future bound. This is happening right now. Because you have kept my command to, pres uh, to preserve, I also, to persevere, I'm sorry, I also will keep you from the one hour of trial which will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. I hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out. No, he shall not. He shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write him my new name. He who is in ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. They will bow at the feet of the name of Jesus. Why? Because they will be caught. They will be begging for freedom. They will be begging for their lives. To those who keep his word, this will come to, and persevere, they will keep, he will keep us from the hour of trial that will come to the whole world and test those on an earth. In other words, the wrath of God which will come to the whole world, we will escape. That's his promise to those who keep his word. Amen? Jeremiah 8, verse 4. Moreover, you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, Will they fall and not rise? Will one turn away and not return? Why has this people slidden back? Jerusalem is in perpetuous backsliding. Now, again, he is talking about the, the synagogue of Satan. They hold fast to deceit, they refuse to return. I listened and heard, but they did not speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his own course as the horse rushes into the battle. Even the stork in the heavens knows their appointed times, and the turtle dove, the, sw the swift, and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. How can you say we are wise? And the law of the Lord is with us. Look, the false pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Behold, they have rejected the word of the Lord. So the wisdom, so what wisdom do they have? Therefore, I will give their wives to others and their fields to those who will inherit them. Because from the least even to the greatest, everyone is given to covetousness from the prophet even to the priest everyone deals falsely for they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace were they ashamed when they commanded ab ab abomination no they were not at all ashamed nor did they know how to blush therefore they shall fall among those who fall in the time of their punishment they shall be cast down, says the Lord. I will surely consume them, says the Lord. No grape shall be on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree. And the leaf shall fade, and the things I have given them shall pass away from them. False pen to scribes. In other words, there's false prophets out there. There's false media. There's false books. There's 
the medical system, there's the false music, the false, all of these things that are evil and wicked that are not promoting righteousness. God calls it as false and wicked. In Hosea chapter 2, verse 1. Say to your brother, my people, and to your sisters, mercy is shown. Bring charges against your mother, bring charges, for she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. Let her put away her harlotries from her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and expose her as in the day she was born and make her like a wildness wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. Now, I want you to, you know, I, I know this sounds crazy, but this is also speaking of the things that are happening right now. What do you call that? Uh, what they've been cutting children and taking their blood, and uh, adrenochrome. I think that's what it's called. I don't know if you've heard of this or not. But the, when they abduct the children, see, this is why they, thir they actually thirst for blood. They've been abducting these children. They, they torture them till their, their adrenaline gets so high, then they drain their blood, and they bottle it, and they drink it. And the, supposedly it gives them youth. Now, this is the main thing that's going on in Hollywood. And this is what, what's his name, was exposing all of this stuff. People that are leaving Hollywood are exposing all of these things. And they're trying to kill them. And this is what it talks about. I will, slay, what, I will slay her with thirst. Why? Because many of them, let me tell you something. We were watching some of these talk show people. And after the period of time that they could not get their adrenochrome, they looked like they aged badly. Some of them came right off of TV. They no longer were going on TV no more. I mean, it's wild. But, but that is satanic. That is a ritual. They're not vampires. Hello? But you might call them a vampire, I guess. But they're not sucking. They're, but they're torturing these children. This is why children... The highest price in the satanic world is a child. They pay big money for children. Not only do they abuse them sexually, physically, torture them, and then take their blood. In verse 4, I will not have mercy on her children, on the enemy's children, for they are the children of harlotry. For their mother has played the harlot. She was conceived, she so she, she who conceived them has behaved shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns and will wall her in, says the Lord, so that she cannot find her paths. She will chase her lovers, but not overtake them. Yes, she will seek them, but not find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then I was better for me than now. So she did not know that I gave her grain, new wine, and oil, and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Therefore I will return and take away my grain in its time and my new wine in its season. I will take back my wool and my linen and given to cover her nakedness. Now I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and no one shall deliver her from my hand. I will also cause her mirth to cease her feast days, her moon days and Sabbaths, and her appointed feasts. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, of which she has said, These are my wages that I may my lovers have given me. So I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. I will punish her for the days of the, of the bales to which she's burnt incense. She decked herself with earrings and jewelry and went after her lovers.
but me she forgot, says the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allure her, will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her. I will give her her vine vineyards in there and valley of Echar as in the door of hope. She shall sing there and in the days of her youth as in the days when she came up from the land of Egypt. Again, these are chasers of the rich and famous. They, are, they thirst for blood. Their God is materialism. God says, I'm going to expose her greatly. I'm going to bring her nakedness. And I'm going to destroy her children in the area to where their children are being taught to follow the same ways of idolatry. And they will follow in their steps. They're, they are corrupt. They worship the false gods, rejecting their creator. And they are considered harlots. These are the realms and the regimes of the lineage of Cain. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. You know, there's so many flicks that are on TV. And, and in many of these things, these things are being mentioned. In, in the Simpsons, they showed the towers coming down. They even put the dates on there. See, they got to explain, they've got to release things before they can do it. That's how the Lord has said it. Or they can't do it. So that's what Hollywood is used for. It's, remember, television. Amen? Tell a vision. So they must release these things to tell the world before they can do it. But do it in a way symbolically. But many people, it's right in front of them, but they don't see it because they're not sensitive or discerning enough. Verse 1, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Everybody understand what's being told tonight. It's right in front of us. The writing's on the wall. The time and season. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us. And given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the what? Sons of disobedience. Okay, if they're sons of disobedience, then there is a father of disobedience. He's known as Satan or Lucifer. Amen? Therefore, do not be partakers with them. The wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. That follow the father of rebellion, Satan. We are to be imitators of Christ in love. In 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. There's something I want to remind you about, again. The lineage of Cain is also known as the Nephilim race. Amen? Remember, Cain was the son of disobedience of the serpent or Satan. Now, you got to remember that words are symbolic. So, when he talks about a serpent, that's a character. Amen? But remember, Satan was a shapeshifter. He can come as an angel of light. He can turn himself into a flesh. In fact, that's what the fallen angels did. They put on flesh, didn't they? Now they have to possess a body because they can't, those demons have to possess a body because those angels are no longer able to put on flesh after God chained them. When he brought judgment, it destroyed the earth. He said, that's it. 
Any, any angel that attempts to put on flesh will be chained in judgment also. So they don't, they're not allowed to put on flesh, but there are shape shifters. They, the spirits of these fallen angels will take possession of individuals. Hallelujah. Okay. In verse 14, it says, But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because a veil is taken away in Christ or in the anointing. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom or liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> They're still carrying blinding. They still carry the blinding veil of deception, unable to see the truth. These are, uh, what are they? These are associated with the Old Testament Jews, aren't they? Until they repent and get filled with the Spirit of God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Now, these Khazar regimes, of course, they're, they change their names so that they, they can't be found. The Khazarians and so forth. Look at the Cardassians. They're all associated. Rothschild, Rockefellers, Vanderbilts, Bilderbergs. Look at those. They're all Jewish names, aren't they? But they are from the lineage of Cain. They're associated with these regimes. And of course, they worship Satan. They're Satanists. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Bohemian Grove, but the, many of the politicians go to Bohemian Grove every year. And, and in fact, uh, I forgot who it was, but it went in and snuck in while they were doing the ritual. And all of the political presidents and so forth from many nations were there. And, it's, and they were worshiping. And there was a huge owl. They were worshiping at this altar. And there was a sacrifice done there. And it was at the Bohemian Grove. I think it's in, I don't know where it's at. I forgot what, I think it's in, I think it's here in the United States somewhere or something. But anyways, and they were caught on film. You can Google it if it's still up called the Bohemian Grove. Alex Jones busted them in that. You know, Alex Jones is being sued. They're trying to destroy him tremendously. He was just in court being accused of some stupid stuff. But he's talking about the Khazar, uh, the Khazar regime. And they're trying to shut him up while he's in the court. And he's up on the stand testifying of all of this stuff. I'm telling you, it's written on, written on the walls. It's all coming out now. Romans 8, 18. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's us. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labels with birth pains and together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but the hope that is seen is not hopeful. Why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Perseverance. Hallelujah. It's called endurance. Still, we still, <laughs> you know, there's an earnest expectation of a big event. Everyone has it in the body of Christ. Everyone knows it's within us. There's an earnest expectation of a huge change, change that awaits 
the true children of God. If somebody says, if you're talking to somebody that's a believer or says that they're a believer, and they don't sense something that there's something about to happen big time, they, they're not right. They're just not right. Amen? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. You know, Conway West just uh, bought Parler, which is another media. So him and Elon Musk, they posted them, and, and Con Con Kanye West had the logo of Parler, and, and Elon Musk had the logo of Twitter. I think that's what he bought, right, Twitter? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Anyways, why? Because they're going to change the message. So there will be more free speech. There won't be any more, there won't be censoring. You know, Trump has his own media called Truth. And there, there you got, then you got uh, Rumble, and you got BitChute. Now you got Parler. So these are all medias that are come up that are not your normal, that they can't be censored. They, 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 they're righteous, conservative, and, and they're speaking the truth. In verse 1, let's speak it together. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience. See, there's a, these are the offsprings. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. That's why we had to be born again. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ. For by God, by grace, his plan, you have been saved through faith. And it is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Amen. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. The prince of power of error is an antichrist spirit, promotes the son of rebellion and disobedience. John 8, start at 42. said to him, if God were your father, you would have loved me, for I proceeded from and forth and came from, my, from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent to me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. Wow. And the desires of your father you want to do. Now, who is he speaking to? The Jews. Amen. The Pharisees and Sadducees. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He was of God. Hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. See, these were the Jews. He was rebuking them. They were the, of the synagogue of Satan. Do you know that the Vatican is also known as the synagogue of Satan? That's a whole nother arena. 
but it's also known as the synagogue of Satan. In fact, the whole building structure is shaped like a serpent. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the what? Same mind, the same thought. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in a lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it is strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation any longer, speaking evil of you. They will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious, and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling, as each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability with God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Behold, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when, he, when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or thief or evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed to let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him and doing good as to a faithful creator. Amen? Praise God. That's where the word says we must work out our own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Again, this is what's happening. It's right before us. It's right. The writing is on the wall. And we are watching the crumble and the dismantlement of the Babylonian system and the exposure of the synagogue of Satan and their regimes. It's happening, it's time, and we got to keep praying against it. Amen? we got to do those warfare prayers. It's essential. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask, Lord, that you would bring us revelation and impartation, sealing what you've given us tonight, and bringing it up as needed so that we can discern, hear, and see what's right before our eyes. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.